In this video, I wanted to take you through the process of animating XGen hair in a production pipeline. So we're going to begin with a XGen Interactive Grooming Splines Groom, and we're going to then from there export curves from the groom, which we will then incorporate into our rig. And in that rig, then we will then use those curves and I'll show you how to animate them both with keyframe animation and with dynamic simulations. We'll then take those curves and export those animated curves using Alembic to be able to then read them into our XGen Groom and then animate the Groom with those cached curves. So let's get to it. So the first thing we need to do is generate curves which are going to drive the hair in our animation. So I begin with the file where I have the interactive grooming splines hair groom and I go to add modifier and I'm going to add a linear wire modifier. I then need to generate the linear wires so I'll click create and you can see it makes a bunch of them. And then I'll expand this. And we have this guide that is created. And I go to the base. And then on the density, actually let me hide the original hair. And go back to the base. So here are my guides. And I could decrease the amount of guides that I have. I can also add more guides into here. So let's say that I decrease the amount using the multiplier and make it half the amount. And then I might potentially say that I don't have enough over here on the bangs. So I use the place brush. Right click, interpolation on, and then interpolation from is to interpolation source. Then I click onto here and it will generate guides which it will then interpolate to follow the base mesh and so on. So once I have that and I'm happy with that, then I need to export this. But I do not want to select the description because that will actually export all of my 100,000 hairs that I have. I select in guide because in guide is a description not linear wire. So I select in guide, I go to cache, and then export cache. And then I go to the directory where I want to save this to. So I'm going to save this under cache. And let's call this Mary Wire Export Demo. And let's check my settings here. We do want to have these two things here checked, multiple transforms and write final width. If we don't have that, it will incorrectly write out the files for our curves. So this, these options make it basically correct, create correct curves. We're going to have lots of curves here under a group if this works correctly. And we want to set it for current frame only. We don't want to render an animation out at this point, just the curves for this one frame. So I'll hit export. And next, we're going to check out what we just saved out. So I've saved my scene, and I now have a brand new empty Maya scene. I'm going to read my curves in that I just exported. So I go to cache, alembic cache, import alembic. And I want to import it to scene root here in the options, and my file is uh, this one here, Mary Wire Export Demo. So I'll just click Import. Here it is, and what I want to do actually is, you can see that these are sort of default names. I'm going to modify the names of all these by going to Modify, Prefix Hierarchy Names, and then I'll give it the prefix Mary, and click OK, and it appends Mary in front of every single one of these curves here. Next, with the group with all the curves in it selected, 
I'm going to export this as an FBX file. So I'll go to export here, export selection, and I will choose FBX from the drop down menu here. And then I'm gonna go into the cache directory again, and I'm gonna call this Mary Wire Demo, and it looks like it exported it out. So I'm gonna delete the ABC curves I have here, and I'm going to then go import, just to make sure it worked. So let's see, where is this here? Mary Wire Demo, that's the one that I just exported out, and then I will import that back in, make sure everything went okay, and it looks just fine. So I'm here in the rig file, and I'm going to import the curves in. Here's our FBX curves. Here. And I'm going to parent them to the group, and then I want to attach them to the rig. Right now, if I move the rig, the curves will not come with it. What I want to do is I'm going to wrap deform them to this geometry here. And you can see that the geometry has been made to encompass the hair groom. So the geometry kind of comes after the hair groom and you just, you know, use a sculpt deformer and get it to fit exactly right so that it's encompassing it. That's, that's important for wrapping it. So I select the curves, then I select the geometry and I go deform wrap and then because I have let me just do this here and I'm gonna pick a joint this geometry is skinned to these joints so when I modify these joints the geometry moves because of the skinning and because of the wrapping the hair moves So now I have my rig file and I've made some test animation on it. So I've keyframed her so that she translates over a little bit, just globally, and also does some uh, neck bending. And then finally, you can see it from this angle here, the hair is also animated as she bends backwards. So I'm gonna use that as my test and what I need to do is I need to select the curves here and I'm just gonna select them individually so I just sort of shift select and then go cache Alembic cache and then export selection to Alembic and it'll go through each frame and exporting that out So I just jumped ahead there. I'm going to then also export out her geometry. So I come into the pick group for her geometry. Notice that her hair geometry is not part of that. And I'm going to export that out with Alembic as well. So cache Alembic. Uh, export selection to Alembic, same frame range, strip namespaces, although again I don't have any. I'm going to put UV right on. I'll call this Geo just to differentiate it. And I'll export that out as well. The next thing we need to do is update our texture file with our hair groom in it to be able to read in the cache. So I have the description under the linear wire selected, which is uh, in guide one here. And I'm going to go to add modifier and I'm going to add a curve to spline modifier. Then under the curve to spline modifier, I want to make sure I have aligned to normals unchecked. So that means that when I bring the curves in, it will not try to 
connect them to the scalp. So at the moment, without any of these linear wire things, the hair will follow the scalp. So if her geometry moves, the hair will move with it. It will just stay in the exact shape that it is all the time and move with the hair in kind of a frozen sort of way. And so I want to have the curves independent of that. So the cur that's why I have this off here. So the curves are going to be animating it completely independently of the rest of the head. I'm going to select cache instead of curves. And then I'm going to come down into here and I'm going to load in the curves that we saved out as our test from our rig file. So come to here and it's this one right here. And I open that up and it reads that in. And I will go to frame 30. And you see that the curves are over here, but the hair is not following it at all. So that is because we need to go to the linear wire and we need to click on update. And what this will do, and it's important that I am at the origin position, T pose, starting point for the reference state. So we need to do this from the rig file and we set up our animation test to begin at the origin position and then move away from there so that we can do this step now where I go back to frame one, I'm at the origin position, I click on update here and then when I go to my frames you'll see that the hair is following it but it's not following it exactly so and that is because on the linear wire here the magnitude scale is set kind of oddly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to follow the root of the hair so it connects here and then this to follow the ends. Now I could alternately make it completely follow it like that and then it completely follows the curves. So when the head is moving along with it that would make more sense to have it at zero and here it makes more sense to have it just visually at one to one complete transformation along here. So at this point I could save the file save my texture file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Save as. And I'm going to call this, let's see, the last one's called wire exported. I'm going to call it wire cache update. And save that out. Let me go back to frame one here. And now this file is ready to go. I'm going to do a further test just so you can see what it's going to look like later. I'm going to go to my GeoPic and I'm going to read in my Alembic cache, import Alembic cache to import merge into the geometry. And then pick my Geo. And then I go to frame 30. And you can see that the geometry is moving along with it, as expected. And as I was saying before, now we could theoretically put the root here to follow the actual head geometry. And then that makes, of course, sense to do it that way. So I'm in the animation scene now, and we have some animation when she kind of turns her head away from the television. You can see that her hair sort of falls down around her face. So just a real simple animation just to demo this. So what I need to do then is export out these curves like we did before with Alembic. So I go to the curves. I'll just pick one and then here's the in guide. I'll expand that and select the top one, scroll down to the bottom and select the bottom one. And then I'm going to come to cache Alembic, export selection to Alembic and I want to export out, let's say, um, 
frames 1 through 115. That's how long our animation is here. And then I do want to have strip namespaces on because I have namespaces here because it's a referenced file. And the other options are still fine. So I'll say export selected. And then I will change that name to anim test and hit export. So I'm back in the texture file where we have, as you recall, read in the cache files through the curved spline and updated it at the origin position. And now I'm going to test out the scene animation. So I just come into here and I'm going to swap out our rig test cache with the scene animation cache. So here we go. Put that into there. And it looks really crazy because I need to also read in the geometry cache. So I go up here, cache, alembic, import, alembic, and I've got this set to merge. And I go anim test geo and read that in. And then I need to update the frame. So I'll just click on here. And then give it a second. So here we are. And we have the hair following the geo. And the geo correctly posed. And if we go to that last frame here, we can see that the hair is following our animation where the hair is falling down into her face. So to recap, we first generate the linear wires and then bring that into the rig, incorporate that into the rig, and then from there we bring back in a test cache and we incorporate that using a curved spline and we need to update our texture file with that new curved spline cache. We have now have a rig that's working with hair and we have a texture file that's working with hair and with both of those in place we're able to export out the curves from the animation shot and build our lighting shot with the animated curves and the animated geometry both in alembic format. So in this workflow we have been working with keyframed hair animation but this can equally work with dynamic simulations. So here I have on the rig file I've read in those same FBX curves and I've attached them to the head and made them dynamic. That's just using the, in the effects module N hair and make selected curves dynamic and you attach them to the scalp geometry and then you tweak the nucleus and hair system to get what you want. So here I've got you know this play blast here of the hair looking good and then all you need to do is go to the output curves and then export them as an alembic cache and then you can read them back into the XGen system just like we did with the other alembic curve cache that we wrote out. By the way these uh, sort of spaghetti like tubes I have here that's coming from the hair system and you can go into here and change it to self collusion thickness and I have it up to a hundred so I get this nice thick things which makes it nice for visualizing as you are working on it in the animation shot.